Now, I want to talk very briefly about the semantic web, and we'll, we'll get into the semantic web much more in a future unit, but I wanted to bring it up now because when you declare entities in namespaces and DTDs and whatnot, you give those entities characteristics, right? Those are all of those lines of code in those blocks that we keep parsing out. The characteristics that you give to entities can be anything at all. And that's really at the root of the semantic web that characteristics for entities can be anything at all. The premise of the semantic web is this. First of all, HTML, as I've said, is intended to govern the formatting of documents in your browser. It lays out, right, put an image here, put some text here, put a link there, right? In other words, HTML is really intended for human consumption, right? It very much is about governing display for human viewers of a page, right? Your browser doesn't care where an image is. You care, right, visually on the page. So HTML is really for human consumption, not really computers to consume. The goal of the semantic web is to make more content on the web more usable by computing systems and algorithms of various types, right? To enable automated systems, to enable algorithms to perform tasks semi-independent of human users, right? In other words, to provide the raw materials, the data on the internet, the raw materials for what are called intelligent agents to work with. Now, I don't mean intelligent agents like Agent Smith from the Matrix, um, but the term that gets used is agents. These agents are intelligent in the sense that they are able to perform tasks independent of a human at the time of an operation. Agents to do things like manage your calendar for you. Now, there's an article that I will link to that was written by Tim Berners-Lee a bunch of years ago that lays out a vision for the semantic web. And part of that is that he lays out uh, examples of the kinds of things that could be possible with more semantic data on the web. Now, why do we care about this? We care because metadata is key to the semantic web, right? Metadata embedded in documents and embedded in links, incidentally, which we haven't actually talked about yet. Metadata conveys information. That information can be passed between computing systems, and those systems can use that metadata to interpret what otherwise might just be human meaning, human semantics, right? Inferences based on the data, right? Uses of the data that's being passed between systems, translations between natural languages and between metadata schemas, etc. So this figure here is from a talk at a conference back in 2005, actually, and it lays out what's called the semantic web stack. Um, there are actually several different versions of this diagram presented by different people in different talks over the years. I chose this one because it's nice and colorful. Um, but the point here is a stack in this case means a stack of technologies that all work together to accomplish a particular goal. In this case, the goal is making semantic web functionality possible. Now, I'm, I'm not going to get into all of the parts of this stack because that's well beyond the scope of a course on metadata, 
But I do want to point out that XML, schemas, and RDF are literally foundational, right? They are fundamental to the, the semantic web stack. Like I said, we will discuss the semantic web in some more depth in a future unit, but I wanted to put a bug in your ear now so that you can remember later on down the road that the technologies that we were discussing in this unit are what make the semantic web work.